despite her party continuing to lose support across Scotland and experiencing multiple defeats recently, Nicola Sturgeon refuses to resign. But what does this actually mean? Yeah, following uh, Jacinda Ardern's resignation a few days ago, there are now a lot of discussions coming up about other political leaders around the world, especially those in charge of governance uh, since the, the first lockdown days and everything else that happened since then. One of them is Nicola Sturgeon. Now, Nicola Sturgeon is the queen of stubbornness and she refuses to resign despite let's list what's been happening recently. The opinion polls, they're collapsing. Uh, they are losing the support for uh, the the leave campaign, <laughs> the isolation campaign. So the referendum that uh, is not actually happening for independent Scotland, which is isolated Scotland, uh, they are now losing more support every day from her, their own side, from the people who wanted to leave the United Kingdom. They are now changing their mind. They are now polling about 42 to 45%. It's the lowest in ages. Uh, they've lost their case in the Supreme Court to have an illegal referendum. Uh, she's completely having a meltdown because her gender bill is now blocked by Westminster. Uh, she's, uh, had, she's had multiple scandals inside her party. They continue to lose money every day, randomly. There's so much missing money. There is the ferry fiasco to deal with. There are schools that are being closed under her government. And uh, the NHS in Scotland is basically forcing refugees to go back to the countries and risk to be in, at, at risk and in harm in Ukraine, for example, just to be able to see a doctor. So this is why she has to go, but she's refusing to resign. She says, well, I still have plenty in my tank. She used the same sentence as uh, Jacinda Ardern, but she said, I actually do have some left. <laughs> she says, if I ever reach the point in which uh, it is clearly reached, she's talking about Jacinda Ardern, but I just think overall I can't give the job everything it deserves, then I hope I have the same courage she has had in saying, okay, this is the point to go. But just for that avoidance of all doubt, I don't feel anywhere near that right now. Nowhere near. I don't think it's up to you, Nicola Sturgeon. So when I said, what does this actually mean? This is probably a good thing. While we know that she's in her final countdown and the SNP government in general, it's probably best if she stays, if she refuses to resign, because by being stubborn, firstly, I know it will be a big risk because that means short term until the next election, uh, she's going to be wrecking the economy and everything else in Scotland. But with her as the main candidate, as the party leader, it's more likely that the SNP will lose. And considering the Scottish Labour Party are finally getting their act together, the Tories are completely invisible these days, it could be a new, fresh chance to bring down the SNP establishment. Not that the Scottish Labour Party are any better, but at least they're not completely as bad as the SNP. They cannot be. No one can be as bad. I, <laughs> maybe they can, I don't know. But uh, it, it is about one of those situations where if she stays, it might actually be better for the other parties if they want to bring down the SNP. Uh, although, having said that, any alternative faces that could replace Nicola Sturgeon I don't really believe that any of them are also inspiring. I don't think so. So whether she resigns or not, I think the SNP will struggle in the next general election and the next uh, Scottish parliamentary election. Let me know what you think. Amaya Tusi and we are the media.